Welcome back to the Action Zone Radio Show. We are here week after week to bring you interviews with inspiring personalities from entrepreneurs to athletes to everything in between in hopes of learning how they did it, how they set goals, stayed focused, and achieved big results. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, you know where to find us over on Twitter. That Twitter handle is Glevine Radio. Again, that Twitter handle is Glevine Radio. So go on over there and uh, let us know what you think. If you have any feedback from any shows or anything you want to hear, that is the place to do it, and we appreciate everything you have to say. Or, as always, you can just go to the website at www.inthezoneradio.com. Again, that website is www.inthezoneradio.com. All right, everybody, our guest for today is George Giles. George is the owner of Hippo CrossFit in Houston, Texas, and we are excited to hear about his whole entrepreneurial journey and how he got into this business and everything that is going on. So uh, with that, George, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming on. Everything going well this morning? It's going great. It's going great. I think you guys have a little better weather in uh, Atlanta than we do here in Houston. You got a lot of rain? A lot, a lot yeah, of we have a lot of rain. A lot of rain. Okay. All right, well, uh, stay dry. All right. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, let's jump in. want to hear everything that's going on. So take us back to uh, your whole journey and how you eventually decided that CrossFit and specifically uh, Hippo CrossFit was your destination for entrepreneurism. Yeah, so uh, it started out, um, I was about 26 years old and about 300 pounds. And um, I just, uh, we just found out we were going to have a baby. And I didn't want to be a, a dad who couldn't play football with this kid and, and do normal things. And one, I didn't want to have health issues. So um, I was tying my shoes one day and I'm out of breath and thinking, I got to make a change. So I lost 100 pounds before I was 30. Uh, my goal was to be 200 pounds at age 30, and I made it. Um, I did that through just exercise and diet, and uh, I tried everything. I tried diet pills. I tried fad diets and everything like that. And uh, ultimately, I settled on. I did a lot of spin classes and things like that. So once I got fit, I got kind of bored um, training for triathlons and stuff like that. So um, I ran two marathons got tired of running and my buddy says hey man let's let's try crossfit i didn't even know what it was and uh he, he says we'll just try it for a month so basically on a dare i go to try this thing i didn't know anything about and we get there and the workout was absolutely brutal i thought i was in shape at the time and i found out that i was very good at endurance things but not very good at picking up heavy objects and doing anything really functional um so after a couple of years, I decided to get my coaching certificate, and then I, I thought, you know, I need to open my own gym. So I took all the things that I liked about the CrossFit that I was currently coaching at, um, CrossFit Strom, and uh, I took things that I didn't like on other gyms, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a business model around that. And uh, basically, we're built around community. We're built around the idea that anybody can do this stuff. Um, it's all functional movements. It's things that that uh, if you want to be able to pick up your, your own cat food and when you're 90 and take care of yourself, you need to be able to, to do those things now. You need to be able to pick up weights and, and uh, do functional things. So that's how we got started. Um, it was a long journey once we, once we established the business, though. So that's awesome. So, I mean, with CrossFit, you haven't lost that passion as you did with the, with the running and the triathlon. So there's something about it because, you know, as they say, when someone's doing CrossFit, you, you know about it, right? That's right. Uh, how do you know a, a vegan and a CrossFitter walk into a bar? Because they tell you in the first five minutes, right? <laughs> but uh, the the thing about CrossFit is it's a community. You know, you're, you're there. You're not at the gym with your Beats headphones in, posing in the mirror, people texting on the bench. Um, it, it's a completely different atmosphere. It's, it is hard to explain to people that have never tried it. Um, but you go in, and, and it's just a bunch of normal folks. You know, if you, if you judge it by what you see on YouTube and ESPN, it, it looks like the Spartans, you know, and, and that's, not really, that's not really the community that's out there, and that intimidates a lot of people. But the thing that, that carries me on with it is, is watching people win every day, watching someone do their first pull-up or, or come to me and say, hey, George, I went to the doctor again, and my doctor says, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. You're... You're off your cholesterol medicine. You're you're off your blood pressure medicine. You're, you know, you're the healthiest you've ever been, and that's to me that's what keeps me going as a business owner. 
um, but also as an athlete is when you're when you're hurting during the workout when you're working really hard and you're you're not sure if you can accomplish what's being asked of you you look around and everybody's the same everybody's hurting with you whether they're an elite athlete or a 65 year old athlete all right George so I mean I've always I've wanted to get into CrossFit and I want you to dispel this rumor so that I can go over and sign up in my local place people say that for some reason CrossFit brings on injury can you dispel that rumor yeah so um the safest place for your car is in the garage right you're not gonna put any miles on it you're not gonna blow a gasket you're not gonna get a flat tire you're not gonna you're not gonna damage it at all the same with your body uh, if you don't challenge your body it won't adapt to those challenges you're not going to get any pulled muscles you're not going to get any any strains and pains the thing that's going to prevent you from getting true injuries is the coaching. The fact that you've got someone there that has had actual training in um, in fitness uh, is way different than going to 24 hour or somewhere and just doing whatever you think's best because it's arm day. You're going to go blast your biceps and and do chest and back or whatever the routine may be. You've got zero supervision um, in, in CrossFit. We do what's called an on-ramp program, and, and most of the gyms do. And I highly recommend if you're looking for a, a CrossFit box, you just ask them about the on-ramp program. It's just like the on-ramp on the highway. It brings you up to speed with the rest of the traffic. So you, you wouldn't jump on the highway at 30 miles an hour, right? You're going to speed up and merge in. This is the same concept. So we teach you how to move safely, teach you how to eat, stretch, take care of your body. Um, we teach you the Olympic lifts, the snatch, the clean and jerk, teach you how to squat properly. You would be amazed at how many people can't squat properly when they come to the gym. They think they're doing it right, but it's like, you know, I don't squat very deep because it hurts my knees. It's because they're doing it wrong. Um, we like to teach people from the ground up. It does two things. When I put that athlete into a class of 30 people or 20 people, they have a much better experience. They feel confident. They know what the movements are. They know, uh, they understand the culture, the, the verbiage on the whiteboard. And plus, they can push themselves to a limit that they feel comfortable with without thinking, oh, man, I don't know what I'm doing here. So that is crucial to preventing injuries is, is the on-ramp program. Mm, great. That's awesome. But, they, you know, you know, anytime you're going to throw heavy weights around, if, if you're not, if, if you let your ego take over, um, you, you, can, you can get hurt. And we have a, a spray-painted sign at the front door and the back door that says, place ego here, because it's got no place in a CrossFit gym. Um, it, that's what gets people hurt. It's cool, man. I mean, you went from, as you said, overweight and not feeling that good, and you, you found the light. So it's pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah, it's it's great, and and you know, don't get me wrong. I struggle with my my diet on a daily basis. I tell people, uh, once you're a fat kid, you're always a fat kid. So um, when people come in, I think it's it's funny. They, they say, I, I can't do this, or I'm they're intimidated, or they're 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 overweight. I say, look, if I can do it, and I've been doing it, you can do it. And what's great is our coaches work out with the classes not when they're coaching but they're a part of the community so they see the coaches over there doing the same work they're doing and and it kind of inspires them to say okay okay i want to be i want to get that guy's score or i want to be like that um we have much less aesthetic goals in the gym so women will come in and say i want to be a size two or i want to fit in my wedding dress and their goals change to i want to be able to do my first pull up or i want to climb the rope or I want to be able to back squat 200 pounds. So, you know, the goals shift from this, from the aesthetic. So it's very cool to see. I'm inspired. That's awesome. Cool. I've been looking for something new to do, so there you go. <laughs> it's it's a great time, man. I, I try a couple of them out. Yeah, I will. All right, George. So let's uh let's take, let's uh, go back to the entrepreneur side of things. I want to talk about what it was like at the beginning. So you decided, you know, this is what you were, where you wanted to spend your your daily hours and making a living and you decided to start your own business. Talk about those early days and getting the business going and, and how it all went down and when you finally kind of gained that steam and, and the business was rolling. Okay, so uh, I started uh, the business in 2014 in my house, literally in my house. Uh, a lot of CrossFit gym start in the garage. My wife was kind enough to let me turn our front sitting room into um, a little miniature box. So wood, wood on the walls, rubber on the floors, had a pull-up rig, 
and I started training um, guys I work with. I trained their wives, and um, and I quickly outgrew the house. Four or five people in, in that room was a lot. So uh, I didn't want to move into a space that was going to require I'd move again. You know, if I get a 2,000 square foot space, this business model is, is limited by square footage, barbells. How many people can you safely fit in a class? How many classes a week, a month? So I wanted a space where I could have showers and it could be nice, plenty of room for the athletes. So I started looking for a building. And uh, as you know, it's like a, a, a little guy, a startup business. These um, people renting these spaces look at your portfolio. And I filled out a, I filled out a financial report for one guy, and, and he, uh, he thought I misunderstood the questions. He says, you don't, you don't have any money. I said, uh, no, I understand that. I'm just getting started, you know, and I explained to him, he says, I'm not going to rent you the space. So the struggle of being a little guy is very difficult and having that cash in the bank. So I finally get a, a lease opportunity lined up, and um, negotiating is very difficult as well. You know, I wanted a few things changed in the lease, and, and they said, absolutely not. So you kind of have to take it as it comes. And um, so the first six months of my lease I negotiated is rent-free to do the build-out, build these showers and whatnot. Um, so we did that very difficult cash flow wise because I had zero clients when I started. I opened the doors. The, the ladies that were working out at my house couldn't go to this new location because it wasn't close to their daycare and it wasn't convenient. So I had to start from scratch. Um, we got the keys in June of last year, opened the doors the next day at 5 a.m. and we had our first class. I had one girl that worked for me. She was going to help me with um, bringing in shipments of equipment and whatnot and cleaning the gym and my, my best friend, Eric. So <laughs> that was the, the day one. And uh, a year later, we had 100 members. So we, we, uh, we did that by just word of mouth, um, constantly getting the name out there, establishing the brand, and just bringing in a person at a time and just, you know, all you can do is care. If you care and you try hard, you can um, you take care of people. And if you take care of one person, they'll tell their friends. So um, that's about it. Were you hustling around? I mean, how did you, you how did the people know about you? Well, I, uh, I worked 12 years in the oil field, and uh, I started with people in my office. They obviously knew I was starting up a business. And um, I started up in a place where it was between the suburbs out in West Houston, Katy, and the Energy Corridor. As you know, the oil field right now is not doing so hot. Um, six months after I opened the gym, I got laid off. Well, not only did I get laid off, but a bunch of people that go into the gym got laid off. So we were spreading the word at work and trying to get word of mouth out there. But then all of a sudden the market dropped out from underneath us. So I was out hustling. I literally would go around. There's a, there's a community college next door. I would go hand out flyers. I would put out road signs. Surprisingly, the best marketing um, in our area was the road signs. I would go out and put these little banded signs out. And before I could get back to the gym, my phone was ringing. Mm. And that worked really well. But all uh, what I learned since then is all of these methods of marketing are very, very labor intensive. Um, it, it actually takes you establishing a relationship with a person, handing them a flyer in hopes that they're going to keep it and then come in. Most times they're going to throw it away. So if you if you stuff windshields or or things like that, it's really not effective for your time. So I moved more towards Facebook marketing, running ads, um, just giving people free trials, giving away a week free, um, things like that. But really, once you the the word of mouth marketing is is massive. You take care of your your we call them the herd. Take care of the herd, and the herd will take care of you. That's that's great news. I mean, it's nice to know that you don't have to run around to uh, parking lots, putting flyers all over, spending a whole day that, but you can just sit at your computer and using Facebook can be more effective. That's that's great. It is, and if you use it properly and target target your market, you can't just say, okay, everybody in Houston. If you say target a demographic, make a video, make content, constantly make content, um, provide advice for people starting out and give, give, give information out there. Um, a great book out there by Gary Vaynerchuk is uh, Jab, 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 Right Hook. And um, it's got some great stuff in it. You gotta give four times as much as you ask for, you know? 
but that the social media works great because you can target a specific audience. I could I could hit up golfers from 30 to 50, and then make a video of the importance of core strength in golf, and that will be a much better marketing tool than bandit signs around a golf course. It must be cool for you. I mean, as you said, you were in the uh, oil and gas comp- uh, you know industry for for a while, and now you're doing this. You must be using all these new and different. Uh, you know, business techniques that you probably didn't even know you had the, the knowledge of, no? It's, it's great, and I've, I've still got a lot to learn, and I, I try every day to just learn how to do this business thing, you know? I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I went to Auburn University. I didn't take very business classes at all, but uh, I'm just, just chopping away at it, keeping my head down. I get it. One time I uh, was trying to market a uh, golf tournament, and... I put all this effort into the marketing and into these um, flyers, and then I went to this um, couple parking lots to you know put the put the flyers on cars, and I was you know just running all around, and and then I you know you go up from one floor to the next floor, to the next floor, and then I came up to the floor that I already put the flyers on, and I saw there was a security guard going car by car by car, taking off every flyer <laughs> I had put on, so you know. Oh, absolutely. I've gotten I've gotten emails from property managers saying, hey, don't come back around here putting your flyers on the cars. And I say, hey, where do you go to the gym? <laughs> so I start talking to them, and, you know, I haven't gotten one of those yet. They're usually in the wrong mindset to want to hear from me at that point. But uh, uh-huh. yeah, So it's just uh, much better to be able to do Facebook. There you go. That's right. All right. So, uh, George, give us some uh, insight. What do you do uh, on a weekly, daily, monthly basis to make sure that you are moving the business right direction? You have any like goal setting strategies? Uh, I don't know. You meet with your team once a week. How you guys plan out to make sure that everything's moving forward correctly? Um, so it's a um, it's a pretty much a standard routine. Yeah, I, my days are long. I get up early, so I don't have a whole lot of time at the front and the back end of the day. Um, to set goals, I, I make a lot of lists. I make lists. I use Evernote. Um, I use Google Sheets to communicate with my team about scheduling and events and things like that. Uh, we have coaches' meetings probably once a month. In fact, we're due for another one. But, um, you know, as far as setting goals, I, daily I try and figure out what, what will put me out of business. What is the thing that's going to cause CrossFit Hippo's downfall? And I say, okay, I'm going to prevent that. And one thing about CrossFit is it's such a community, it's like a family. So you can imagine, try to run a family business, except instead of the family business being everyone in your family works in the business, everyone in your family buys from the business. So in that type of tight-knit culture, providing structure and rules is really difficult. So you can, you see, obviously, my first client was my best friend. We punish people for being late with burpees, right? So trying to get your friends to do punishment because they're late, but it's part of the culture so that it doesn't become a systemic problem. It's very difficult, it's a very big challenge. So um, we we set goals um, for the business based on our KPI, you know, our member retention. What are we doing to keep members happy? What are we doing to um, get members in? Um, what are we doing to spread the word. What are we doing to convey that anybody can do this CrossFit thing? How are we getting that message out? And and to see on a daily basis what what of those things are we lacking on that could be the, the chink in the armor that could take us down. So we just got to look at we've got to look at what is gonna put us out of business, what what are we doing too much of, not enough of, you know, that sort of thing. That's an interesting thing because, you know, you want everybody to come to every class and then someone's, you know, going to be five minutes late because of work and they got to double, you know, double think. Maybe, uh, do I go? Do I not go? I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> we, we, we don't want them to not go and it, it needs to be a positive thing. But at the same time, the classes are one hour and uh, our most popular class is the 5 a.m. And those folks got to go to work. So we do the class as a group. And if people straggle in and slow the class down, it really affects everybody's day. And um, just as a courtesy of the group, we try and get everybody just get in there and, and be efficient and work through your workout. All right. There you go. All right, um, George, another thing we want to talk about is stress and pressure, and uh, that definitely comes with business ownership. So give us some insight, man. How do you deal with it all? I mean, you got a lot on your plate. You got, 
You got you to make the bills come in. You got all these people wanting their uh, paychecks paid, and you got a whole bunch of customers you got to keep happy. It's a lot of stress, a lot of pressure. Tell us how you handle it, man. So um, it sounds crazy, but exercise is key. Um, if I don't work out, I get cranky. I, I get cranky like a baby. Um, work out every day. I sleep whenever I can. So we have a gap in classes in the morning. People laugh at me when they finish their shower. They walk by, I'm asleep. Because if I don't get enough sleep, I can't be on and be the best coach I can. Um, if I work a, an entire day, we've got a bunch of coaches, but if for some reason I work an entire day, by the time I get to that 6.30 class, I get really cranky. So I need to get that rest. Um, I drink lots of coffee. And mainly, I remember why. Why am I doing this? You know, I'm doing this to change people's lives, but I'm also doing this to support my family. So when I get down and I get discouraged, I just think, okay, you need to get some sleep. You need to get a cup of coffee after you get up, and you need to remember what what are you doing here? Why are you doing this? Um, and that that motivates me. Do you so, get any uh, big quotes or pictures on your walls that you kind of have to you go back to? You say, all right. Give me center. So, reminds me. <laughs> so uh, we're we're very military oriented. I wasn't in the military, but uh, as a kid, I wanted to be a Navy SEAL. So one of their sayings is it pays to be a winner. So um, that and my dad used to my dad used to tell me all the time to suck it up. He's one of my uh, one of my biggest role models and inspiration. He was a, a business owner my whole life. He's retired now, but watching him just flash at it and just love his customers and love his employees and just try every day really inspires me. Um, and he used to say something. He says, no matter how much somebody's yelling at you, they can't eat you. So <laughs> they can't kill you. So just uh, take it in stride. Make sure you're doing your best. So what, what time in the day do you do the exercise? Morning, afternoon, evening? I... Optimally, I would do it first thing. Um, studies show that, that the dopamine response released in your brain um, from exercise, it acts a lot like Ritalin for, for kids. So um, I have ADD, so if I work out early in the day, I will perform better throughout the day than if I wait. Um, plus, you know, it feels good. When you finish, you get a sense of accomplishment. Nobody can take that time from you. That is your hour of the day. And for, for my stay-at-home moms and for my working moms and my the guys, that's, that's you time. Um, and if you get that in the middle of the day or the, the front end of the day, that sets you up for success the whole day. A lot can happen between work and the gym in the afternoon that can affect that you time. So I try and do it in the morning, but as a as a gym owner, I went into this thinking, man, I'll be able to work out all the time. That is not the case. <laughs> I work out when whenever I get a chance between classes, I'll grab a workout. So uh, optimally, you jump in that 5 a.m. class. Yeah, that, that's 5 a.m. is a, a great class, and, and it gets me gets me started. But it's a big class, so it requires two coaches. So so we um, I'm usually coaching that one just wondering what time do you think you used to wake up when you were you know not as in your healthiest um so i used to work i was a workaholic i used to work constantly when i was 300 pounds i would get up uh, i had a boss who's a, a real slave driver he um he used to make us have meetings at 6 a.m wow so i was getting to work uh early wow. and um um uh, leaving we'd have events after work and happy hours and clients interface and not get home at eight thirty, nine o'clock. That's part of the thing is if you just don't if if you don't treat yourself like an athlete, you won't be an athlete. Um if if all you're doing is working or cleaning your house or taking care of the kids and you're not making time for your body, for the only body that you've got to live in, it's gonna go by the wayside. And then you're gonna turn around, you're not gonna be happy with yourself and, and that's Ultimately what happens, you work yourself into just this perpetual state of unhealthiness. So. Great advice, cool. that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard, but you gotta make time for you. All right, George, so um, you got a mission out of this business, and I'm sure you got a big vision, so where do you hope to be? Five years, 10 years? What's the, what's the uh, ultimate plan? I'd love to, um, I'd love to open another gym. Um, I've had some friends open gyms in close proximity to um, 
to their gym now, and it, and it was it was kind of cannibalistic to their community. But I'd like to open one, you know, farther away. There's just so many people out there that that need this, um, and convenience is key. Put it put it between a person's work and home, and they'll go. Um, so five years, I'd like to have a second gym. Um, I got a six year lease on this one, so we'll be reevaluating where we are here. Um, and then uh, 10 years, just have a strong brand and um, have met my revenue goals and the lifestyle that I want to achieve. You know, ultimately, if you, if you reverse engineer where you want to be, you say, I want to make X number of dollars, how much revenue is that per month? And, and you work it backwards. Well, it ha- has to meet the life you want. So in 10 years, I hope that this whole thing is supporting the, the life that I want. I get to spend time with my family and raise my kids and... Um, and just be what I want to be financially and have a high rate of retention at the gym. I want people to come and stay. Has that at all been a challenge or has it been per, you've been pretty successful in the retention rate? Retention's um, extremely high for a fitness facility. Um, CrossFits are typically a little bit higher because of that community aspect. Nobody's going to know you're gone at, uh, at a, a Globo gym, we call them, any of these commercial gyms. Nobody, nobody knows you. They don't know your phone number. They don't know, you know, you're struggling at home, whatever. They don't know that. So they're not going to know you're missing. The CrossFit, they do. If you don't show up, they know you're not there. Like, hey, Bill didn't show up today. Is everything all right? Somebody call him. And um, um, so retention is pretty high. Ours has been very high. We've lost a, a few in the last month or so because of just summer and you know, finances and things like that. The economy is pretty tough in Houston right now, so we're hoping to get that turned around. All right, so something I got to know is, uh, was it difficult to come up with a name? I mean, Hippo CrossFit, that's, uh, that's different, that's out there. Uh, tell us about that whole process, was it, you know, and how you came to finalize yeah, it? Yeah, CrossFit Hippo, we, uh, we, uh, Hippo is a nickname I got from the first gym I, I worked at, and it was kind of, <laughs> I don't, you know, to be honest, I'm not sure where I came from, but it fits. You know, I've got, I'm bald, bad teeth, big butt, you know, but I'm a good swimmer, so the, the name fit. But one thing people don't know about hippos, they're the deadliest animal in Africa. They're the most underestimated threat in that continent. So that's kind of what we, we go with is, is that you don't know what's under the surface. You don't know what that athlete is like inside you. So people come in completely underestimate themselves. They think of themselves as some label, I'm an engineer, I'm a mom, I'm a, a carpenter, or whatever, but we want them to think of themselves as an athlete, and we're, we're here to untap that potential. So uh, when, you, when you register as an affiliate, you pick a name, and I got approved pretty quick because CrossFit Hippo is pretty unique. It's not CrossFit Delaware or CrossFit Houston or something, but uh, animal names get picked pretty quick, so it wasn't too bad. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, so we uh, before we let you go, we want to number one get some parting advice to all the entrepreneurs out there, all the uh, aspiring and aspiring athletes out there. And uh, before, definitely before you go, I want you to give you all the uh, all the ways that people can connect with you, find your website, find your place, uh, all your social media. So give us first some advice to everybody out there. Okay. So for the entrepreneurs, make a plan. Write it down, create systems. Even if you're the only name in the org chart, write the org chart. Write down all the positions need to be filled. Create those systems as soon as possible because the, the burnout monster is a real thing. You've got to delegate the tasks off. So as soon as you can financially afford it, you get someone to take care of the cleaning or the, or the calling of the members or whatever. You have got to delegate that stuff off because you can't do it all yourself. Um, and then, you know, kind of philosophically as a business owner, you, you gotta, how do you want to be remembered? What's the, what's the legacy that you're, that you're writing? Write your own eulogy. Do you want people to remember you as the, the hard ass or the, or the guy that, that cared for you no matter what? So, um, and, and, uh, the middle sucks. You're gonna start, you're gonna have lots of energy and you're gonna be fresh and excited. Then you're gonna get into the grind. Keep your eye on the ball. You've got to grind your way through the middle. It sucks, but the the end hopefully is worth it. If you create a business that supports the lifestyle that you want, the end will be more than worth it. So, and you got to say, uh, 
I got, I'm have, I'm uh, grateful for you that you don't have to work at that job where you have to work for that slave master and then have to go to all those uh, events after work. That sounded rough. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Freedom, right. man. There you go. You created it. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, I, getting laid off from the, the oil field could have been the best thing that ever happened to me. I literally, I had to burn the boats. Um, I had to fully commit. And um, I love what I do. And um, it, people say, well, how do you get fired up every day? Well, if you if you truly love what you get up and go do, you're not working for Friday. You're not working for the weekend. It's not really work. You're just going and doing what you're passionate about. I've had so many bad jobs that I just peeled myself out of bed for, and this isn't one of them. Don't say I'm not tired, but, man, it's it's so rewarding watching people win. It's so cool. Awesome. Great stuff, man. It's really uh, awesome that we connected and you got to come on the show and great to speak with you. I'm uh, I'm inspired. I'm motivated. I'm ready to make it happen. <laughs> try, try it out. Try it out. Check out our, our website. It's uh, www.crossfithippo.com. Uh, check out my bio. You can see a, a Fat George picture on there. Uh, it looks like I'm about to eat that baby. No, I didn't. He's fine. Um, and then uh, on Instagram, at the CrossFit Hippo. Surprisingly, CrossFit Hippo was taken on Instagram, so I don't know how. Um, and then we're on we're on Snapchat too, CrossFit Hippo on Snapchat, and Facebook. Obviously, we've got Facebook, CrossFit Hippo. Uh, so CrossFit Hippo is everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. All right, George. Well, listen. Uh, much appreciated. Great to speak with you. Great to connect with you. And we wish you all the success. And uh, hopefully, we'll speak again soon. Thank you so much for having me on. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. This has been another episode of Action Zone Radio Show. As always, questions, comments, feedback, you know where to find us, Twitter, GLine Radio. Again, that-